Have you ever gone into a pharmacy or supermarket looking for a magnesium supplement and just been overwhelmed by the choice? Well, in today's episode, I'm gonna go through the different forms of magnesium available and what you should use them for. Let's get straight into it. As you may already know, magnesium is a cofactor in over 300 different enzymatic reactions in the body. So there is a huge impact on your body if you don't get enough magnesium. We'll go alphabetically through the different forms of magnesium. So first up is magnesium citrate. Magnesium citrate is a very common magnesium found in supplements. This is magnesium combined with citric acid. Citric acid is found in citrus fruits such as lemons and limes that gives it that sour tart taste. Citric acid is an ingredient that has a laxative effect and is found in products that cleanse the bowels before a bowel procedure such as a colonoscopy. So magnesium citrate also pulls water into the bowels to cause a mild laxative effect. It's a really good form to choose if you want to increase your magnesium levels, but if you also suffer from constipation. It's highly bioavailable, which means it's well absorbed by the body. Don't use this form if you suffer from loose bowels or diarrhea. Next up, we've got magnesium chelate. Magnesium chelate is magnesium bonded to an organic molecule, such as an amino acid. The purpose of chelating magnesium is to allow for better absorption. Most magnesium chelate products won't specify which amino acid is chelated to so it's a good well absorbed general purpose magnesium supplement for example if you're taking it to help reduce muscle cramps number three magnesium chloride this form of magnesium is used topically in skin preparations and it's flakes to use to soak in the bath as well as orally. There is little evidence that topical forms of magnesium are beneficial as you can see in this study published in 2017. Number four, magnesium glycinate. This is magnesium combined with the amino acid glycine. Glycine can be found by itself to help calm your brain and improve sleep quality. Magnesium glycinate is good for conditions such as sleep, depression, anxiety, cramping, athletic performance and recovery. Magnesium glycinate is well absorbed and doesn't have a laxative effect. Number five, magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide shouldn't be used for magnesium deficiencies. It is used by itself as a laxative or in combination with other ingredients as an antacid. Number six, magnesium L3-anate. Magnesium l 3 n 8 is magnesium combined with threonic acid. It is well absorbed and differs from the other types of magnesium as it crosses the blood brain barrier. This basically means it can get into the brain cells. This form of magnesium is best for brain related conditions, including depression, headaches, migraine, anxiety, insomnia, Alzheimer's disease, and age related memory loss. More studies are still needed in this area. The disadvantage of magnesium 3 and 8 is it's not as good at increasing the total magnesium in your body. So if you're looking for something for your muscle cramps or athletic performance, then don't use this one. Number seven. Magnesium malate. Magnesium malate is magnesium combined with malic acid. Malic acid is a fruit acid that is sometimes used in a supplement to reduce exercise induced muscle fatigue. It plays an important role in energy production. Magnesium malate is best for conditions such as fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. This form of magnesium can be stimulating, so it's best not to take it too close to bedtime. It's well absorbed and doesn't cause any laxative effects. Number eight. Magnesium orotate. Magnesium orotate is magnesium combined with orotic acid. Orotic acid is important for building DNA in the body. Magnesium orotate is thought to help protect the heart and is good for conditions such as heart failure. It is also thought to improve endurance during exercise, so it's a popular supplement amongst athletes, although there isn't much evidence to support this. It's easily absorbed and doesn't have any laxative effects, but it can be quite costly compared to the other forms of magnesium. Number nine, magnesium oxide. This is a salt that combines magnesium and oxygen. It is one of the most common forms of magnesium found in supplements as it is cheap to make. However, it is poorly absorbed with only about 4% being absorbed into our body. It can also have a laxative effect. Generally, I would advise to stay away from this form as you won't be getting much magnesium from it. Number 10, magnesium taurate. Magnesium taurate is a combination of magnesium with taurine. Taurine is an amino acid commonly found in pre-workout and energy supplements. Taurine Taurine has been found to have some benefits in reducing blood sugar levels, cholesterol, and high blood pressure, as well as improving exercise performance. Magnesium taurate has been found to help reduce blood pressure, prevent irregular heartbeats, and have cardioprotective effects in rats. 
Of course, more studies need to be done in humans to be conclusive. Magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is a salt that combines magnesium, sulfur, and oxygen. It commonly goes by the name of Epsom salts. Magnesium sulfate isn't used for magnesium supplementation, but is more commonly used in bowel preparations as a laxative or added to a warm bath for sore muscles and feet. So here are the best forms for magnesium supplementation. And the worst forms for magnesium for supplementation is magnesium oxide. And definitely don't use these forms of magnesium if you're trying to get your magnesium levels up. So I hope this gives you a good overview of magnesium and which ones are best for you. If you found anything useful in this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.